Hey everybody, welcome to Road CC. Um, I'm here today with Dom from Fairlight Bikes. Hello. Hello, Dom. Hello. Uh, Fairlight's had a really good run of uh, bikes on the site over the last few years. Uh, we got Bike of the Year for the Strail. Yeah. And then the Sakan got the Gravel Frame Set of the Year. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we like what you do. <laughs> Thank you very much. And now we've got a new bike. This is the? Farron 2. Okay. Yeah. So, obviously, this one here we've got 650Bs. Bigger tyres, we've got another Randonneur build here as well. Yeah. Slightly more road oriented. So why don't you talk us through some of the stuff you've done with this bike and kind of who it's aimed at and uh, how it differs from your other bikes. That'd be really helpful. Okay, so uh, the Farron 2 is, um, it's in the same family of products as Sakan. So Sakan was obviously our gravel bike um, following on from the Strail. Um, and the Farron 2 sits in that family. So it's, it's also, um, intended for gravel, but it's got more of a, a towing slant to it as well, uh, or more towing capability. So um, I'd describe it as a touring, Audax, randonneuring, utility and all-purpose bike. Mm -hmm. um, it's unlike a full-on tour, it hasn't got great big long chains, it's still a, a lively, nimble machine for, you know, super agile, um, and it suits a, a wide range of riding styles. So you can pretty much build it up to do more or less anything. It's more of a more of a do anything bike. It's yeah. It's certainly it's our. It's very much a do anything model. Um, so, like I said, we've kept the frame sporty. We've transferred across all of the tubing details um, from the Sakan and the Strand. So it's all the custom shaping. But obviously, you've got the steel fork with all the different mounts, which I can touch on in a second. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got that um, sort of ultra utility. You can have any size of wheel, 650 or 700, lots of different sizes of tires, front racks, rear racks, cages, dynamos. So I'd imagine it's the sort of bike you'll probably, you could buy and over a course of 10 years, you might build it lots of different ways. Um, so I suppose utility is the best way to describe it, but in a, in a light, lively package. Okay. Yeah. So who do you see as who do you see as the person that's buying this bike then? I mean, um, is, it, is it specifically aimed at one of those places, or is it just a really good all rounder? I think it's just a great all rounder. I think uh, it's whereas the Sakan is obviously also an all round bike, and I suppose steel, in, in as much as uh, the material favours itself to multi purpose type bikes, it's really the uh, I suppose the steel fork on this which makes it more of a true all-purpose bike in that you can load it so many ways. Um, we've kept the geometry um, more specific, not 100% specific for front loading. So it'll ride really well with a front load, um, but nice and fast and agile without a load as well. Um, but I suppose you're, who's aimed at commuters, randoners, Audax riders, gravel riders, someone who wants a bike that is going to last them 10 years, where they can swap parts out, where they can run two different sets of wheels, dynamos, frame bags, racks, whatever they want, and not have to buy a, an over-the-top heavy frame to do all of that. It's still a light, lively, well-designed product. Okay, I mean, let's talk about some of the specifics. We've got Betsy in the background there. Hello, Betsy. Showing us the fork. So, a steel fork as opposed to a carbon fork. Yeah. And lots of stuff going on here so why don't you talk talk <laughs> us from the top to the bottom so uh, the first thing fork wise is it's um it's a nice lightweight butted steel fork so the fork blade is uh it's 1.2 mil towards the crown it, and it's butted down to 0.8 mil so it's lightweight butted legs um a one and one eight steerer which we think is the right choice for a steel fork i certainly don't believe in going to a tapered steer unless you're really moving into long travel mountain bike type territory. Um, and then on that fork, because it is steel, we've really got this commitment to utility. So you can mount everything. You've got uh, pack mounts, uh, 30 degree angle round to the back, four pack mounts. And the reason for that is we find that cages, um, they vary in size between the bottom bolt and the bottom of the cage. So with most cages, you'll be able to run them on those bottom three. With some cages, you might want to run it on the top. You could also run bottle cages at the top and a smaller pack mount on the bottom. Um, you've got a randonneur mount. So on the bike behind me here, we've got a Nitto randonneur rack with mm -hmm. a lovely Gram randonneur bag. Um, low rider mounts. Um, and then we've got internal dynamo routing. And- uh, Yeah, you've done a lot of work with the dynamo, I can see. 
We have, yeah. So we've, uh, to make sure that we're clearing the tire, we've got a neat little clip, which takes the wire away from the tire and back up. And it also positions the little inline charger port on the Sun lights for, for easy access. So again, this sort of product, we want it to be as functional as possible, um, everything accessible, um, you know, all the sort of usability is on show, if you like. Yeah. And also internal routing to the backlight, I can see there as well. Yes, yeah, so we've got internal routing uh, to the rear. So the, the wire enters the 3D printed cable guides. That's the guide we've used in all our models so far. And um, with this newer version, we've created a little hole in it, which um, you remove a little grub screw and you can put the dynamo wire all the way through the frame and it exits here. So we've got a little dynamo port. You've still got a, di a DI2 port underneath, so you can run dynamo and DI2. And then we do our own 3D printed mount um, for Son rear lights. So on this particular bike, which is destined for the UK, um, we've got the rear light on the drive side, um, but we've also got a neat little routing option on the disc side. So if you're um, riding uh, in mainland Europe, then you can mount the rear light on the disc side as well. Okay, cool. And is there a reason you've chosen that particular mounting point there for the light as opposed to, you often see them kind of up here or you see them on the mud guard? You do, yeah. Mudguard. I mean, it's something uh, I thought long and hard about is, in my mind, the dynamo needs to be a permanent fixture. There's no point in having it on and off all the time. So you may want to run it along with a, a, a blinker or two blinkers. So I thought, where's the place it's going to be most permanent you can, where you can put a mud guard or a rack or remove both and not have to move the light. So actually this, I felt, was the best location. Uh, down here on the dropout, you can fit a rack, you can fit mud guards. You might have to space the light out a bit, but it can always remain there. If you've got it up here, which I know is quite popular, um, one of the issues is if it's a smaller frame with big wheels, you can block the light. Some of the, some of the saddle packs, this is quite a small one, but the bigger ones can sometimes rest down here. So it's blocking the light. Um, and again, I think a lot of people uh, on extended trips are using dynamos with a combination of a little blinker. So you can still have the option to mount it on a seat post, but that's a permanent, if your lights run out, you've got your lighting on display and it marks the edge of the bike as well. So if you're in a car, you're seeing this light, you're seeing the edge of the bike. So it's a bit safer for the rider. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I mean, let's move on to the frame a bit. So this one, um before this, you've been using 853 steel. Yes. And now you've moved to 631. Yeah. So what's the thinking behind that? So uh, the, yeah, you're right. The Strail and the Sakan are both 853. Um, this is a 631 tube set. So the first thing to say about 631 and 853 is they're actually the same um, steel. Um, 853 goes through an additional um, heat treatment and kneading process at the end to add strength and effectively the heat treatment gives it, yeah, it becomes a much stronger material, but in its raw state, it's the same material. So all of the shaping we've done on the, on the, on the Sakan, on the show with the flattened top tube, the bioval down tube, that's all done pre-heat treatment. So we can keep all of that shaping on 631. Um, because of the design of this bike and the sort of riding it's intended for, um, We've used walls, uh, wall thicknesses at 0 0.8, 0 0.5, 0 0.8 for the top tube. The down tube is the same, but it has a section of one mil internal at the head tube. It's called DZB, it's an internal gusset. Mm -hmm. And at that wall thickness on this style of bike, um, 61 is, is perfectly strong enough for what it's intended for. Um, we've also got a small, very small external gusset because of- it's here. Yeah, yeah, because if people are loading that fork up with huge big panniers for a world tour or for you know, a few weeks away, then it just gives that extra strength in what is the highest loaded area of the frame. Um, but yeah, we've effectively carried over all that uh, intellectual property that we've got with Reynolds, all that custom shaping. So you've got that lovely ovalized top tube, which is designed to wallow under loads with effectively the wheels moving out. And that's driving a lot of this comfort that you feel in our frames. The down tube, um, horizontally ovalized at the BB, um, to resist against the sort of pedaling forces vertically at the head tube again resisting the braking forces which is the sort of highest load with your weight on it um, and a standard Reynolds seat tube for a 27.2 post um, for the lovely comfort that the 27.2 post gives you um, so yeah it's a it's a really I think a great tube set that you're getting all the technology from the other models on this bike cool and in terms of the builds, I mean, obviously we can see like we've got a random air build here with a, a 700C wheel. Yeah. This is uh, much more of a bike packing type of build. Yeah. 
with a what's that a 2.2 inch tire that's a 2.2 conti racing yeah right okay so very versatile in terms of what you can do i mean what is the that's that's approaching i would think the maximum of the tire that you're going to get in this frame or is it yeah even bigger still so um the actual distance on the chain stays um between the the, the two stays is 68 mil that's the widest point so we say that the biggest tire you can fit in actual measurement is 58 mil, um, which is a 2.2. Um, these actually, these are 2.2s on Hope rims. They come up about 56, 57, and there's a good five mil clearance each side. Um, so there's, you know, there's loads of mud clearance, but I've had 2.4s in that measure the same because there's such a variation. So we really say sort of stick to the, what it physically measures with a set of calipers. So 650 by 57, uh, is the most and with a 700 uh, we say it's 47 and actually the issue there isn't the um, clearance between the stays because the chain stay is relatively short at 430 as the wheel gets bigger so if you start heading towards the 20 on a mountain bike tire you're, you're going to run start out running against the seat here. tube okay so yeah 47 by 700 so in terms of the geometry it's quite similar to the Sican, but obviously you've got a different fork and the the use case is slightly different. So what have you done in terms of the geometry to make it better for, for sort of loaded riding? Yeah, so because of the steel fork and the capability of carrying, so that one of the reasons people might choose this over a Sican is they might envisage it in the future, they want to carry uh, two panniers or, or a random rack or all of it or packs. Um, we've, um, we've reduced the trail number and the trail, effectively by reducing the trail, you're making the steerer a bit quicker in a brief summary, the higher the trail, the more stable the bike is, the more it wants to self-center. So by reducing the trail, it becomes a little bit more lively. And then when you add a load onto that, it, um, it slows down with the load. So the trail isn't super low with a, with a 650 mil by 47 sort of road plus wheel. The trail is 48 mil, whereas on a Sican, it's about 58 mil. Um, so it just feels a little bit faster steering um, without a load. It feels more like a trail, I would say when using a bigger tire because the tire's got a bigger contact patch um, and more friction and then if you've got the rack on the front around the no rack or panniers it just slows down a little bit um, but because you've got it faster in the first place it still you're feels kind of back to where you you've were. gone back to yeah. where you were sort of thing so yeah it's just um, to um, best way to describe it is as it is there without any bags on it on the front it will feel very similar to a trail and then you put some bags on it and it's gonna be very close to the Sican, so a little bit more stable. Um, so yeah, it's, um, you don't have to run it with bags, it will feel great without, but um, obviously one of the reasons you've got still fork is the intention in the future, you may want to. And for the cabling, we've got external cabling here. So you're a big fan of external cabling, Dom. Absolutely, yeah, yeah I just, um, you know, it's my sort of, Focus on design is very much functional. Um, aesthetics obviously important, and we, we do a lot of work on graphics and all the rest of it. But in terms of usability, um, serviceability, you know, I want access to the cables. Um, I want access to the brake hose. I want it to be easy to fix. And um, you know, it's by doing the in internal cables, you've got complexity with brazing parts on potential rattles and things. So it's very much with intention external cables, and, and I think always will be. But um, anything, you know, all of these decisions we've made, the smallest decisions about dynamo routing, big decisions like tube selection, cable routing, the fork, the geometry, you can find it all in the design notes on our website. Uh, there's a link to it on the homepage. Just click the big image on the middle of the homepage. It'll take you there. And it talks through all the decisions and why we've made those choices. Um, so the user or potential customer can understand uh, what the bike's all about. So it's well worth a read. And in terms of the builds, you're selling it in frame only, so it's 899 for the frame and fork? That's correct, yeah, 899. But also six full builds, is that? Six full builds, so uh, you've uh, GRX 600, uh -huh. GRX 800, and GRX 800 Di2, and you've got one buy and two buy of all of those options. Okay, and on top of that, you've got different size wheels? On top of that, you've got, yeah, 650 or 700C wheels, um, dynamo wheel options so one of the great new features we've got is we've um, partnered with hope and we're doing hope dynamo wheels now 
so it's a, a standard Hope, either Fortis 650 or the Hope 25 in the 700. And we're building Son hubs into Hope rims. Um, so it's a nice feature that you're only getting through Fairlight with these wheels. Um, tires wise, I think there's six choices. So you've got three 650B choices, Byways, Senderos, both WTB, Conti Race Kings. Then we've got Radlers, Byways and Panaracers in 700. So, okay. Yeah. And the sizing on these is interesting. I mean, I've been through the sizing process because I'm going to be reviewing the bikes. So yeah. I've sent you a bunch of measurements. Yeah, yeah. And you've told me what size of bike I'm, I'm going to be riding. Which yeah. Is, which is useful. Uh, so it's almost a, it's kind of halfway to a custom fit in a way. Yeah. But also you're you're doing them in two different size, uh, two different heights yeah. for each frame size. That, that's right. That's it. Yeah. So we have um, we call it Fairlight proportional geometry. So it's something we we've done from day one on all, on all the models. Is we have. Uh, effectively five standard sizes, so 51, 54, 56, 58, and 61. And for each of those within that, there are two head tube sizes, so a regular and a tall. Um, and what it means is we can achieve a fit for um, a greater range of people within that size category, either to do with their individual physiology. So they might have proportion of everybody long limbed in terms of long legs, short arms, long arms, short legs. Um, or just flexibility. So we know from our my business partner a background in bike fit um, that you know this concept does work. That by having those two head tube lengths, um, we can cover a lot more um, people's fit requirements. So yeah, as you did, you can send in your fit data. You can either send us a bike fit report if it's retail or one of the other fits. You just send that over to us as a PDF, or you can submit your existing bike measurement. So you've measured one of the bikes that you ride a lot. Yeah. Um, it says which points to measure on the site, you send it in, we send you back a report from our end saying you need a 58T, 100mm stem, 10 mm spacers, 172.5mm cranks, whichever, 440mm uh, bars, and that will match your fit. And if you buy the bike, um, it's set up like that for you for no extra cost. So you're getting this custom fit for uh, you know, a production bike cost as well as all the design features we've built in, all the tubing that you know we do for Reynolds, all the other stuff that we put the time and effort into. Um, so yeah, there's, it's, I think, a great um, offering for the customer. Great. So there we go. That is the uh, Fairlight Farron 2. Yeah. Thanks, Dom, for your time. No problem. If you've got any questions about this bike, uh, then ask them in the comments below. We'll get them answered for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this on Road2C. Cheers for watching. Cheers, Dom. Cheers. Thank you.